Hey, kitty, kitty. There's my shed right here. I've been living in these most of my life. Come on in. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the shed. I'm Lonnie, and we are gonna do a little eBay work today. Uh, a couple of things, though, first. Number one, I talked about the, um, the insertion fee changes they're making on eBay, and I'm, this is the last video if you wanna check that out. And I, um, I mentioned you get all these extra listings and stuff, depending on what category you're in in some cases. Uh, but there's also a big caveat there in that you do have to um, you do have to either be in eBay's managed payments or signed up for eBay managed payments and I, I know some of y'all can't actually do that yet so I mean I'm signed up for it so I'll be good but a lot of you guys may not may not be able to do it yet so if you're not part of that then I don't think you get those new listing things uh, which is weird it's it's odd that they would it's odd that they would give that to some people and not others uh because yeah i don't know anyway i wanted to make sure i pointed that out because some people drew that to my attention and i didn't notice it the first time i read through it so but anyways um and the other thing a couple of videos back I asked about uh what y'all are binging on netflix or what you know what you should binge on netflix and a lot of y'all said uh, trailer Park Boys and I've watched Trailer Park Boys through once so that is perfect for me to play in the shed so I started uh, doing Trailer Park Boys again yesterday because I finished Lily Hammer man Lily Hammer was so good I just wish Lily Hammer had a few more seasons to it because they lost funding or whatever and they they canceled it but um mm. oh well anyways let's get to work let's pull some eBay orders Okay, first up, I sold three comic books, and I don't, they didn't say they were a viewer, so I don't think they are. May have just bought three because of the shipping discount. On this these particular listings, I charged um, $3, no, $4 for the first comic, and then... Um, any other comics on the same order ship free so i took advantage of that so anyways these three tarot witch of the black rose comics is there nudity there's almost nudity <laughs> on these anyway 15 dollars a piece plus four dollars shipping for these didn't see um didn't see a note on this one either however i'm pretty sure it's a viewer this is going to jeff and this is a Tamrac camera bag. Pretty nice one. It's it's perfect for a DSLR and some other goodies. And uh yeah, Tamrac and Low Pro are they're pretty good. Pretty good bags. I usually pick them up at garage sales and stuff if I can get them pretty cheap. But uh yeah, sold this for $19.99 plus shipping on top. Thank you very much, Jeff. Hope you like the bag. Okay, next up, uh Mike bought some galactic connections let me see which one 31 gc 31 and he also showed me a youtube channel it's not reselling related uh it's about here it is right here it's about um off-roading it's this channel right now, let me change it up this channel right here dirt toys md all about off-roading and stuff so thanks a bunch mike hope you enjoy this huge box of coin things i'm going to the other store mean pc store karen bought some cds i just listed yesterday and i let's see i put them up here here we go this is a country romance set time life one of those uh time life things you see on tv this uh this set outer box has a little bit of wear but uh the cds are all brand new sealed inside so thank you very much karen as always appreciate it hope you like them 
The rest of these orders are action figures, four action figures going out. Two of them are from this box right here. Let's see. Um, Gerardo got John Stewart Green Lantern for C999. Let's see. Oh, he's on top right here. So this little guy went for $9.99 plus shipping. Thank you very much, Gerardo. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoy. Hope you like it. And then Keith got 12-inch Catwoman. Here she is right here. This girl. 12-inch Catwoman for $8.99 plus shipping on top. This is from 1996. It's vintage. So thank you very much, guys. And I got two more to pull. Okay, last two orders are for Penguin here. He sold for $10.99. He had a defect on his hat. See where the paint is missing? He is new with tags, but I had to disclose that defect and then give a little price break for it. And then the other one is, is that a Catwoman? I think that, yeah, that's a Catwoman there uh, from Batman Returns. This got $19.99 plus shipping on top. So that is everything. Let me get this stuff packed. It's time to play, is there anything free in the Wii? <laughs> Uh, I've got my third and final Wii from the buy I made this past weekend. And we're going to power her up and eject her. See if there's anything in. Come on, we need something good here. Be really nice. There's a disc. All right, what do y'all think it is? I'm still going Wii Sports. Still going Wii Sports. Come on. But I, I hope it's something else. Like Wii Sports Resort would be nice. Boom. This is uh, Dance Dance Revolution Hottest Party 2. Not Wii Sports. <laughs> oh well. There was something in there anyways. Uh, yeah, and let's, more importantly, let's see if this thing works. Gotta sync it up. Okay, yeah, we gotta sync. Good. And it's seeing the disc. So it looks like we're good to go. I'll go ahead and uh, test this thing out and get it listed. Mail time real quick. I was going to go get some paper towels from the house to clean that thing up a little bit. But uh, I made a post last, well, a couple weeks ago, maybe, that I was wanting to know like what scanner I should get. Because I, like, I want to scan in barcode sometimes instead of typing them in. And I can plug this into my Mac. And Ryan over at Thriftmine, he messaged me. He said, hey, dude, I have one. I'm not using it. You can have it. So I was like, that's awesome. Thank you. And he sent it to me. So thanks a lot, Ryan. And maybe Pam, too. Pam might have had something to do with that. I don't know. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I appreciate it. And uh, maybe I'll, I'm going to try and see if I can get it to work. I'm guessing I'll plug it in and then... If I'm at a UPC code spot, I can just hit the button. I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's that simple. Please be that simple. Um, and then I got something else, too. This box. I didn't know this was coming. Uh, this is a shipping on top mug. And it's got like... Um, this is really awesome. It has like this vinyl wrap or something on here. It's very... It feels very uh, durable. This is awesome. It has my name on it. Check this out. With shipping on top, and it's a very. It feels like a high quality cup. So make a very good coffee cup, and it's the right size too. This is, I, I like this size right here. Perfect. It has uh, A B on the bottom. So I don't even know. I'm not even sure who sent this. There's a little note in here. It's a really nice cup though, and I use this size all the time. Like I bought, this is one I need to bring to get clean up. This is one I use a lot too. So yeah, I bought this actually at a garage sale, I think for 250. So uh, anyways, that's the exact size I like. And let me read this real quick. Just wanted to thank you for the order and shipping it so fast. Okay, so they, they bought something from me. This is Angela and Robert over at well they're not saying who they're with so you know what i'm not gonna 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say who it is either. But anyway, Angela and Robert, thank you so much. Uh, this is really awesome. It feels good in the hand too. I like the way that wrap feels on the hand. So yeah, I'll be using this a lot for sure. Well, I got all the weeds listed now. Um, I still have. I still have some accessories and some games. I'm waiting for my cleaner, of course, for that. Um, I have a Wii Fit Plus inside of this box, like the game, and I could sell this for pretty decent money, especially since it has the box and it has the little riser things. Um, so then I got a couple of dance pads here. I'll have to look, look those up, see if they're worth anything. Then I've got um, accessories and whatnot. I've got, I've got a few controllers and nunchucks. I do have a gamepad here. I think that's a yeah, that's a Nintendo gamepad. So yeah, I got some more stuff I can sell there. I'm just glad all three consoles worked because I wasn't. If I had it all to do over again, I probably wouldn't have bought that. <laughs> I'm gonna make a little money on it though. So um, now though, I'm working on this. I, I was going. I'm like, all right, time to attack this thing. And I'm gonna stay, you know what? I'm gonna stay on this thing till I get done. Um, get it out of here. <laughs> uh, but I, I listed something similar to this. I didn't realize I had two of them though. <laughs> I've got this one right here that I listed the other day. And then I had another one that was sitting like up in the, up in the uh, Z rack, Z bar or whatever you call it thing forest and it's got even more samples they're they're curved though i don't know if that matters much i'll just show the photos here's what you get <laughs> but it's got a lot more though it's got uh like 10 of them so charge a little more money for this one and i plugged in this uh scanner just now it's like well hey, let me let me see what i can do with the scanner it's lighting up but uh my Mac is saying identifying your keyboard. It's picking it up as a keyboard. Oh man, I gotta figure out if I can uh, install a driver or something. Okay, quick download from IntelliScanner. I just Googled it, found the download, and let's see if I can search using it. All right, bing. And look, it put it into didn't even have to hit enter it put it into the search and then pulled up a bunch of oils so that's awesome so thanks again ryan i got it working now here's something i noticed i want to show you all an example of a bad listing these are the tuner pegs from west germany schaller or schaller however you pronounce that and i was looking at the title after i listed that um sample kit and this is this title is the worst title ever it has every word in it except for guitar guitar you big dummy how could i not put guitar in here <laughs> i'll fix it now all right y'all should be proud of me i just listed a clothing item <laughs> right here it's nothing uh i'm not doing anything too fancy just hanging it right there there she is and then just move my light over there hang it from right there so yeah, I got that guy listed, and then I got another one moved that was already listed. I moved it over to the box, and I listed my little aluminum briefcase. That was actually at the bottom of the Z-Rack thing. And then I listed a little color case here. So making a little progress. I'm gonna try and get a few more things listed though. Well, this is a cool piece. I remember getting it too. I've had it for quite a while. This is actually i believe it's a canadian battle dress uniform shirt or jacket i should say from world war ii interesting thing a good 19 commando 1945 battle dress good 1945 dating canadian blah, blah blah so it looks exactly like this to me this is definitely made out of that old scratchy wool type stuff and it it doesn't look worn if it was worn which i don't think it was it was very very little i don't see any wear at all on this thing what if there was something very cool in the pockets so this thing may be there may be some demand for 
for one of these in this kind of condition, right? I mean, look at that. It's a beauty. And here's the uh, here's the inner thing here. Workman Uniform Company Limited, Montreal. 5'11 and, and 6 foot tall, 42 to 43. That's the size. And there's a night. I think that's a date right there that's incomplete. I see a 194 battle dress blouses surge. I see a 194 and I can't see anything else past that. CA. My Canadian friends, is that Canadian army or something like that or is that even a am I even reading that correctly? So, I've never had a Canadian army thing before. So anyway, I think I'm I might wait to hear what what the responses are like to this video before I list this but I think I might just do an auction on that well I know most of y'all won't like this background I'm using but this light is working perfectly it's extremely well lit I just shoot right through here and with this camera this camera if I expose the text I can actually get in tight on spots without having to walk or anything because it's got a pretty decent little zoom on it or I can come all the way out like that to get the whole thing so this is working out pretty well knock this friggin z z bar thing or whatever you call it, what do you call it a z rack a z rack thing this is the same exact shirt as this i actually found it sold for the same exact um shirt and everything but they took a best offer 35 plus 10 but they took a best offer we're gonna find out i know just about all y'all know about this but uh, let's see, what is it called? Oh, flipper tools. Their tool works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> see, it actually says fixed, working again. So I think eBay does things to try and combat that. I don't know why they don't want to let people know the true price. Okay, so they took $25. I'm going to list mine for $25 plus ship. Okay, I just got my first opportunity to try my little scanner thing out. Um, so this is a Vineyard Vines vest. It's brand new with tags and I've got to fill in my UPC spot here. Let's scan it. The bad angle or what? Oh, it's upside down? Is that the problem? Yeah, okay. And yeah, it took it. Look, it's right there. That's pretty cool. I need to get more used to the angle though. All right, here's the time of day where I'm going to stop working. And well, no, I'm gonna keep on working. But look, this is all stuff from up there. And then also, this was from over there too. As well as this thing was from over there too. I've got, I've got stuff on the floor and whatnot. And uh, yeah, some stuff's gonna get sold, donated, whatever. I'm clearing that thing out over the next few days though. I promise you that feels good to get started I actually had some pretty pretty decent clothes over here uh, better than I thought and I've got some some packs and bags and stuff like that some big hiking packs what is this a baseball pack bag or something I went kind of crazy on the baseball bags for a while I think these are actually listed I just think probably gonna have to donate those they don't even use those anymore um, what is this street and steel motorcycle jacket i'm not sure if i have that listed or not this is uh, that's a vintage boy scout uniform it's not that old though still probably sell it uh ozark trail i don't even know that's not worth anything that's like a walmart brand and the, this is this harley it says harley davidson but it's like a kid's thing i think it's a kid's thing yeah 810 and it's it's actually got some damage on it I, th I think i'll have to check it out i remember i got kind of oh look right here i remember i got kind of roasted for this whenever i bought it because i paid like a couple bucks for it and um i think people thought it was like real leather it's actually it's not leather it's pleather it's fake <laughs> it, i mean it's a real jacket but yeah Oh man, 
there's not really that much stuff up there it's just kind of bulky stuff and some of it is my stuff <laughs> uh oh look i have a thrift mine shirt up here i've never worn are you kidding me wow yeah i've got two thrift mine shirts yeah i must have got one for candace okay huh there's a carhartt shirt so yeah bunch of stuff to go through let's get to some questions though okay it is later tonight and i went ahead and pulled pulled up some questions and comments from a vid the not last video but the one before that and we've got a bunch today we're gonna do 21 so i'm gonna go through these as quickly as possible <laughs> so uh strap in here we go i'm gonna try and buzz through these but i know i get long-winded uh uim verf do you ever sell something so quickly and wish you price it higher yeah sometimes i mean i do mess up on pricing occasionally but usually i base it on comps but i do still sometimes make mistakes a lot of times though whenever something sells quickly it could either be you price it too low or i think a lot of times uh some people just have saved searches and they jump on it as soon as they're alerted that you listed the thing and they jump on it as soon as it pops up but honestly uh I just do the best I can and I move on to the next thing. But yeah, I definitely make mistakes on pricing from time to time. As y'all know, I'm sure. Uh, Silver Hair Stacker. Let me see. I'm going to read this. Just the part. All this being said, I have a question. How much of your YouTube success do you attribute to the other YouTube folks you have rubbed shoulders with the last five years? not trying to make light of the incredible stuff you've done, but would like to know your take on your success because of your associations with other YouTube folks. It's a good question. And um, a, lot of, a lot of creators use collaborations and whatnot to grow their channels. And uh, I guess I have to some extent, but not really. Um, most of the things that I've done on YouTube, I've done with friends. They were like actual relationships actual friendships uh, i've i've never reached out to another channel and said hey you want to collab on this like i didn't know them or something uh we've always had some type of relationship first and typically i've been the one that's been reached out to for the most part there's been some times where it was me reaching out uh but those relationships of course have resulted in um uh, extra exposure and views and stuff like that but i think that's i, I don't think it was anything that was uh pur purposefully done on my part i think it's just a natural thing become part of a community you make friends you do stuff together you work on stuff i don't know for me it was very very organic um i don't even ask anybody to sub to my channels when they watch when they watch the videos i don't even do that so i'm probably the worst youtube self-marketing type person ever but yeah i certainly um my relationships definitely contributed to my success and hopefully my relationships have helped contribute to the success of others i've tried to make that happen too uh, along the way so I've tried to provide as much value as i could for other people um and of course i've been the recipient of that two there one big big thing um Pete Craigslist Hunter shouted out my channel when I had like 30 something subs and I picked up my first couple of hundred subs from that. And then later on when I had like 5,000 subs, he gave me an even bigger shout out and I got like, uh, I don't know. It's hard to say probably three or 4,000 subs from that one. So that certainly accelerated things, you know, uh, and I've done this. I've tried to do the same for other people too. And I think I have. And then like, uh, you know, like my relationship with John Cincinnati picker, uh, when we first met, I think I had like a thousand subs and he might've had a couple hundred, you know, me and him have been best of friends ever since then. And of course we've done other projects and stuff together. And it's just cause we're friends and we like working together. We like each other, you know, but, it's resulted in more success for both of us, I think. Uh, and then there's plenty of people like that that I can name. But yeah, there's no doubt that relationships and I hate this term, networking, play a part. Uh, 
probably in any line of work, pretty much. Eddie Block Films. Is the shed purchase on this channel or the other channel? Uh, the shed purchase is on the other channel. And I'll put the links down below. I think I've got several videos about it, but this is the video where Candace and I went shopping for a shed. My wife and I go shopping for an eBay storage shed. That uh, I'll link this video and the other one too. And then this is when they actually installed the shed. Um, and I think there might be one more maybe where I went and bought it. Uh, maybe. So, but this, like this was on January 3rd. This is on January 22nd. So from the point where we were looking around the shed lot to the point where they were installing the shed was only 19 days. So yeah, good question. I'll link them down below. All right, sugarcane. ELM machines are awful. So expensive for supplies. A bench grinder with jewelers pads and blue and white buffing compound are so much better. No water, no pads, no machine to break down with an expensive repair. Supplies cost $30 and last a year, even buffing thousands of discs. So uh, I, I respect your skill. I respect your work. Um, I respect your DIY nature. However, what you're doing, it ain't for me. <laughs> I want the ease of putting it in the machine and taking it out of the machine, and I will pay for that. I'll, I'll pay for that convenience, and I'll know it's more expensive and maybe not even as good as what you can do. But I do respect your craftsmanship or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yeah, sitting in front of buffing, sitting in front of a grinder with all these different solutions and grinding pads and all that stuff, that ain't for me. That's not something I really want to do. But I respect that you do. Uh, Robbie K, I'm very curious how you made out on your bulk buys like the Hot Wheels and Pops. Would you ever do a video or a segment when you recap how much you made on those deals? Robbie, you know what? I have done those, those segments. Um, I did one specifically, if you, if you just scroll back the past two, three weeks, I did, I did a video called how much money will I make on Funko Pop? And I went through all the math. Now that was assuming that everything sold and you know what? Everything pretty much sold. I've got a couple, I've got like, there's a pop there. There's one here, one there one here, couple here, but they pretty much all sold. So the numbers from that video, how much will I make on a pop buy or something? I can't remember the name of the title, but if you just look back a little ways on this channel, you'll see it. And I'll line out all the math and um, you can see exactly how it did. And the Hot Wheels, they're pretty much gone too. And you use that math like for the um, final value fees and stuff. And you know, you have to, factor in packing materials and things like that. I don't want to do that every time I make a buy, but like for the Hot Wheels, 400 in, gross, 2360. That does not include shipping. So shipping would be on top of 2360. Then you got to take out uh, the 400 cost of goods. You got to take out packaging. You got to take out fees, all that stuff, okay? But yeah, I did, I have done that once with the pop buy for sure if you want to go check that out and i'll, I'll do it again but i'm not going to do it every single time uh fatima or fatima purple libra hi lana i noticed you have electric socket with shelf by your computer do you mind me asking where did you buy that at and i bought that on amazon these are actually pretty cool uh you take you take like the outlet cover like this cool green outlet cover if I wanted to put one there, which I'm not, I would take that off and then these things screw, screw in there. And they're pretty, you know, it's on there pretty solid. And then there's, I think there's two different size shelves that slide in on top here. I think this is the bigger one and they're pretty handy. I like them. They're made by Sharper Image. You see this one, I have my external drive on top of. Um, so yeah, I like them. They're, they're pretty... Or you put a phone or what, you know what I mean? Like nothing super heavy or anything. I do have an extra one right here. Uh, it's brand new sealed. And I will give it away in this video. So if anybody wants to win this, just write socket shelf in your comment. And I'll do a drawing on the next video. 
they're pretty cool and i'll put a uh i'll add a link to these down below i need to uh i need to pause this video and write down all the things that i'm going to link in this video now question from the guy file Hey Lonnie, do you refund shipping through PayPal or put cash in the package with a note? Just wondering, I've done both. I've done it both ways too. And uh, usually if I would put it in a package, maybe I'd put a buck or two or three in the package, up to maybe five. But I think it's important to remember that if you do put money in the package, um, that you're probably, you're probably gonna be fine. But if something ends up happening with that order, like say, say there ends up being an INAD filed, uh, and you end up having to eat the whole thing, including the shipping, right? That's what would happen with an INAD. With an INAD that your customer wins and you have to give all the money back, uh, the money that you refunded, eBay and PayPal don't know about that because you put that in the package. So I would advise to typically, with, like I do, I would advise to uh, do that through PayPal. And via managed payments, I don't know what you can do or if you even can. But uh, yeah, there's no record of the cash thing though if you if you put it in the package. But I have done it. But like if you refunded like say 20 bucks in in the package, and then later on you had to refund it, well you'd be out all the money you collected plus that 20 dollar bill. Whereas if you would have done it through PayPal, you would have only been out all the money you collected. So that's just one thing to maybe think about in that scenario. Uh, but yeah, a buck or two, yeah, what the heck? Why not? Uh, Nicholas asks, is under your shed insulated? If so, how? It is not. We don't have super cold winters here. Under the shed is not insulated and it's up off the ground on cinder blocks. Uh, Gerben, uh, one question. Are you going to finish the roof? I mean, the insulation is there, but would it not be nice to board it up? Greetings from the Nether Netherlands. Uh, Gerben, no. Uh, what you see is probably how it's going to stay. So if I haven't done it yet, probably not going to do it. I don't see, I don't see myself moving stuff out of the way. I just don't see the benefit at this point. And one of the reasons I didn't do it to begin with is I kind of wanted the rafter space without having to make like a, a real tiny attic. And I don't know, it would have been kind of, would have been kind of hard to put a ceiling up there without going across the actual skeleton of of the structure so i didn't think it was that important honestly and i still don't but yeah i guess it would be nice it would definitely look better but yeah um sarah said question you said you would be happy to sell on average eight items a day how many items would you need to list a day to achieve that well i think sarah once you have a decent base of inventory in your ebay store I typically like to list about what I want to sell. Like if I want to, if I want to sell 300 a day, I think if I list 300 a day for of good items for long enough, I think I'll probably sell about 300 a day. I've been doing this eBay thing for a while now, and uh, my my total active listings on eBay they haven't like been growing or anything. So I I think put put into it every day what you want to get out of it but if you have a lot of real slow moving stuff uh you may not get instant results you know like if you have a lot of stuff that takes six months to a year to sell uh you may have to put in you may have to list eight items a day for a year before you start seeing you know sales of eight items a day whereas if you list really good stuff it might be instant but yeah i, I think list a day what you want to sell a day is not a bad place to start and then reevaluate once you get results in right big jim question when we as resellers clean repair resurface a game movie cd should we state this in the listing if not what could be the drawback from not doing so uh i would i don't i don't i, I guess it i don't know i'm not sure exactly what the ethics of that are uh it is cleaning, but it's kind of like a physical thing. Um, I think ethically, I think it'd probably be better to say that you resurfaced it, especially on uh, something that's like very like collectible. 
if it's a game that's clearly priced as a playing type game maybe it's not as important but like a 30 40 50 dollar game that you know is being bought by a collector uh disc has been resurfaced and is and there are no scratches you know i think i think you could you could divulge that you have resurfaced it and a, and put a positive spin on it to where you're you know uh what, what's the word we used to use um positioning the resurfacing not as a deceptive practice but a benefit to the customer to get a clean disc at a good price so yeah i, I think it's ethically i think it's probably better to tell them it's been resurfaced but if if people don't i don't really care i probably will john miller says maybe just me but i feel listing anything under 20 bucks is a waste of time the five to ten bucks sales feel like too much work for nothing also keeping listings i've seen videos of sellers saying i had this year six months in my opinion is crazy as well but that's just me so i i i agree like i think in a perfect world that every single sale i would average thirty dollars on and sometimes i do average thirty dollars on every sale but sometimes i'm averaging more like twenty dollars sometimes i sell if y'all watch this channel i'll sell stuff that's two three hundred dollars or more and sometimes i'll sell stuff that's 8.99 right um and i i do i do think perfect world i would like to sell eight things a day that i profit net profit thirty dollars a piece on i think that would be that would be really nice but i can also understand uh business models where you do multi-quantity of cheap stuff that is super easy to pack i get that too uh and you just move a lot of quantity like you know wrigley's chewing gum they made a lot of money on chewing gum and they never made any money you know they never made any like large uh, sales to any one customer. It was all 25, 50 cents at a time. So I understand what you're saying, but I also think uh, keeping an open mind that there are uh, successful strategies involving lower cost stuff. But what my what my goal is though is similar to what you're saying. I want eight sales a day, thirty dollar net profit a piece, two hundred forty dollars a day, thirty days a month you know netting 70 whatever 7200 a month just on ebay alone that would be awesome that'd be perfect and sometimes i do that not very often though uh the other thing about keeping listings uh i would agree with that for the most part i think there can be some special cases but typically after i've had something for over a year or maybe over 18 months uh it was probably just a bad buy <laughs> probably just a bad buy and i don't have a ton of that stuff but i have had that kind of stuff in the past and i don't go through my listings and clean them out just because i don't think it matters that much but i think i think ideally you would go through and run sales on all that stuff and clear get it the heck out clearance it out give it away whatever you want to do so i mean i think perfect world i agree with you for the most part um toy addict this was this was cool my shed is 112 square feet 8 by 14 i have almost a thousand on ebay as well as some on etsy i do have a loft and usually concentrate on smaller items i would love more space but it is doable organization and a good storage system are key so that's pretty amazing 8 by 14 does that include workspace too or is that just for storage of your of your inventory? I'm curious about that. I would imagine you wouldn't have room to work in there. At least I wouldn't think. But I don't know what you sell. Maybe you would. Uh, Forex Guru said, Hi there, love your videos. You should check Pick Click. This will help you to research your toy figures. So yeah, I have actually used like the Google image search. And I've never heard of Pick Click before though. Um, and I, ha I think I might even have that Google Lens thing on my phone. I just don't use those too often. And sometimes I like to crowdsource. Use you guys as like a hive mind. <laughs> That's kind of fun sometimes. Um, so I was not, I was kind of knocking off for the day before I started doing video work. And I'm like, I'll just ask them 
And sure enough, within about, you know, a few minutes of that video getting published, I had my answer. So, uh, Harley Handler. Is it expensive to list items on eBay? Can you give me a little input as to what it costs and how long the item lists for? Uh, it is actually, if you're just getting started on eBay, it's free. You get 50, maybe it's about to go up. You know, look at, look at the video from yesterday. But I know for sure you get 50 free listings a month and your buy it now listings are good for 30 days. So you can list 30 things, or I'm sorry, 50 things, uh, and it won't cost you a penny. Now, what, what it will cost you is when that auction is over or when that listing uh, sells, I should say, it will cost you a final value fee, which is generally about 10% from eBay. Then you have to pay processing fee to PayPal, or if you're in managed payments, you'll pay that to eBay, which is like 25 or 30 cents plus... 2.9% of the total sale, including the shipping shipping portion. So um, most of your costs, as far as fees go, are gonna come on the back end. So yeah, get in there, give it a shot. Just keep in mind uh, to hold back money for the fees, because that's something a lot of new sellers don't do. They spend all the money or, or whatever, and they don't have any money left for those final value fees, which get billed to you like at the end of the month. So, good question though. Cooking with Mary Sue. So when you move things around, you have to go and change it in the listing too, so you know where it is. Yeah, I don't do it too often, although I did do it today. Uh, I had something here that I moved over there to, to the new, that new box down there. And I did go into the listing and change the location. Uh, you can actually, like on your listings view, you can actually go into an edit mode if you're going to move a lot of them around. Let me pull it up right now real quick and show you. This is just my active listings view. And I have my custom label field here. And I can actually go in, hit that, and without going into the edit editing screen or anything like that, I could actually change it right here and hit submit. And it's done. Right? I think, I don't know how many different, oh, you can change the quantity like that, the price. And that's about it, I guess, of the stuff I have on my, my list here. But yeah, I don't do it too often. Colin says, Lonnie, I'm new to reselling about four months in, but I'm having a fun time doing it as a job. I'm 17. Do you think I should consider doing liquidation? I know you have a guy. I wish I did, but I'm looking for other options than garage sales. Also, what should I do once garage sales end? Well, uh, if you're worried about inventory and you're currently doing garage sales, uh, that's why I used to like to try and buy as much as possible during garage sale season, even if I couldn't list it all. Although my opinion of that is changing because I have another source. So now I kind of would rather um, get everything I buy in a week listed that same week because I may have a thousand item buy right around the corner and I don't know it yet. But uh, to your question about liquidation, um, I don't know. To me, to me, liquidation, I've looked at it before. I've looked at these different sites and stuff. I guess it depends on where you buy it from but I would tread very carefully. I think a lot of the liquidation sites, there's little to no profit. Uh, and in a lot of cases, they're, uh, they're just offloading crap they couldn't sell. I've even seen some places where uh, they sell bo big box lots of stuff. And then they're also selling, they're, they're selling the big lots of it to you. But then when you go to list it, they're also your competition on the platforms where you go to list it. So I would tread very carefully. Um, I've seen a lot of success stories. I don't always know if they're true. I'm sure some of them are. I've also seen a lot of uh, stories about, you know, people losing a lot of money doing it, doing it. So do your research. I wouldn't go too, too deep on the first try. Give it a shot. You know, if it's something you're interested in, you think you can make it work, Give it a shot. Maybe later on, I don't think you can really buy too many storage units right now. Maybe later on, storage units will be an option. 
Facebook Marketplace is an option. Thrift stores are an option. You know, there's a lot of ways to get product. And the longer you do this, you'll find that, um, that the sourcing side of things starts to become uh, a smaller and smaller uh, obstacle. Like it's not, it's not gonna be the bottleneck of your business. But best of luck to you. Be, I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna say anything else about liquidation. I, want, I probably would wanna say some negative things, but to be honest, that's not fair because I've never done it. So for me to say something negative about liquidation stuff um, wouldn't be, um, it, it would be disingenuous because I've never done it. And I know some people have success, but best of luck to you. I wish my, well, my daughter just turned 18, but I wish my 17 year old daughter was would be interested in something like that. That'd be pretty cool. All right, Brian says, have you considered getting a nerdy apprentice? That way you'd have someone who will do things like identify action figures, attack the rack, and pack the shipments in exchange for learning important reselling skills like fan placement, keeping secrets from your spouse, and how to lowball a kid. Okay, I'm assuming that's just a joke. No, I'm not getting an apprentice or an employee or any of that stuff. That sounds horrible. That sounds worse than polishing disc on a bench grinder. <laughs> Uh, no offense to either one of you guys, by the way. Just making a joke. All right, Lisa Paul asks, Lonnie, do you have a newsletter for your eBay store? Why or why not? Just wondering. Uh, well, Lisa, I guess after this video, I need to go find out what you're talking about. A newsletter for my eBay store. I don't even know what that is. I guess it's some kind of mailing list thing I can do for my customers. Um, I do not have one. I did not know it existed until I read your comment and put it in this in this uh, on this screen right here. So no, I don't. <laughs> I need to find out in the comments. Do y'all have newsletters? Do y'all know what she's talking about? Because I have haven't a clue, and I'm probably missing out on something here. And finally, Big Stew Barbecue. Verify when you have business policies, you cannot bulk edit handling time. Talked about this the other day field does not show up handling time is inside the business policies but you can edit the handling time within the policy and apply to all listings with that business policy not bad if you only have a few shipping policies set up but could be a pain if you had a lot note i did not choose to have business policies it seems it may have been a default when i changed my account to a store okay good so that i've assumed that the reason Big Stew Barbecue couldn't change handling time. It's probably because of business policies because I know RVA Flips had that same issue and uh, he had told me about it. So I'm glad I remembered that and that was the case. And the business policies maybe, are, are they worth it? <laughs> because they don't sound like it. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of problem just like doing handling times and stuff. I don't see a, a big reason for business policies. Maybe I'm missing something, so. It might be a newsletter type thing that I don't even know about, right? So anyways, uh, thank y'all very much for watching. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna win a socket shelf, then write socket shelf, just like that in your comment. Uh, if you wanna buy one, I'll put a link down below. I like them, they're pretty cool. You get outlets here, there, bear, bear, burp, and two USB outlets. So anyway, take care guys, bye-bye.